I'm going to be doing some Mermel test hands with my new Mermel deck that I made a video on the other day. So if you want to check out a full explanation of my list and see the full list in general, make sure you check out my previous video where I show it. This will, of course, be in the April 2020 format under Master Rule 5. And I am not playing the Automantia Synchro. I did think about it. I haven't really tested it that much. It is good, uh, but it's technically not out yet, I guess. That's part of the reason I'm not playing it. And, of course, at the end of the month, we have the Deep Sea stuff, so that will change a lot. So let's get into these tests and see what we can do. The deck now, I feel like, has so many more plays thanks to Needle Fiber or Halka Fiber, whatever you want to call it, and uh, it's a lot more explosive. So we have a fantastic hand so far. Um, unfortunately, it is very susceptible to hand traps. So the thing is, like, in a in a perfect world where our opponent does not have any hand traps, we could just normal summon the Deep Sea Diva and go from there. Uh, if we want to be safe, but there's also still some risk in this, we could Mirai Agreed away both the Divas and see what we get. But at the same time, if we get, like, a controller... Jet Synchron and like Call by the Grave doesn't really help us. So I'm going to play a little bit risky. I'm going to normal summon the Deep Sea Diva. For my test hands, I like to play it as if I'm actually in a tournament to see what my opponent would do instead of doing the full extension I could do uh, normally because, you know, when you play in a tournament, your opponent is going to have responses most likely, whether it be a hand trap, whether it be you're going second and they have something set on the field. Uh, anyway, Renek Diva, get Neptibus, use Neptibus' effect, send Dragoons, add Dragoons, and we're going to add Megalo. There we go. Gonna use the effect of the Mermail Abyss. This is a fantastic game, by the way. The more I look at it, we have Teus, Diva, and the Monster Reborn. That is pretty crazy. So discard Dragoons, special Teus. Both their effects are inactive. Gonna wanna get myself an Abyss Gun. If you play Mandy, you get that here as well. I'm just not playing it right now. And off the Dragoons, we're gonna get ourselves, let's see, we're gonna Moulin Glacia, I guess, because we have another water to discard for Megalope anyway. And I'm pretty sure we'll be able to drop the Moulin pretty easily. So we'll link with a Teus because we have the gun to get it back anyway, and we'll link away a tuner in the Deep Sea Diva so we can summon Halica Fibrax. We're going to use the effect on Summon, which is going to bring us out the Jet Synchron. That's a tuner that I'm playing. Uh, for this particular combo, I guess the Fishborg one would work too, because you don't have any non-waters in Grave. But uh, since I play Genesis Controller, and since I want to be able to Synchro into non-waters, uh, I like playing the Jet Synchron. Although if you want to go to just the water route, then you should definitely play the Automantia Synchro. Whatever it's called, out of Mosh, it's in Secret Slayers. <laughs> um, so now we're going to summon out Megalo, discarding the gun and the Diva to summon Megalo. Megalo will get a search, and we'll also bring back the Abyss which is pretty nice. So we'll get ourselves the Abyss Scale, the Mizuchi, and uh, that's it actually. Uh, we have exactly five waters, you can't really see my graveyard, but it's uh, double Dragoons, double Diva, and an Abyss Gun, which equals five of course. So we're going to drop the Mulan, we're going to rip two cards out of their hand, so... We'll use our little dice there from Sword and Shield. And now from here, we have some plays. So we could go a hand loop route if we so desire, or we can just put up in the gates. I'm going to go the hand loop route just because I feel like a lot of the combos that I see on YouTube go for the gates. You don't really see two people showcasing the hand loop variant. So I'm going to do that right now. So we're going to go into Jet Synchron and Teus for level 8. And we're going to summon Psy Frame Lord Omega. Finally have this card after proxying it for like ever. <laughs> gonna use the effect, whatever, banish it, rip a card for a little bit from their hand. And then we're gonna use Jet Synchron's effect. I will discard the more agreed. I guess I could have monstered Gordon if I really wanted to, but uh, whatever. I'm gonna bring back the Jet Synchron. I'm going to Synchro 8, or sorry, Synchro 9, because we already did the 8. Jet Synchron will get banished, and we can also bring it back with the Psyframe from the other Psyframe effect, which it doesn't come up a lot. I'm gonna go into Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier. Also, uh, I try not to summon monsters here, I just realized I did, but um, with the new Relinquished Link, I don't know how popular it will be in terms of play, I try not to summon things under here, it hasn't had to be yet, but technically they could summon Relinquished Link here and just take my Mullen, uh, which is pretty bad. So keep that in mind when you're playing, and of course, you can summon things in defense too, because you know, Lightning Storm is a card. Uh, so that's going to be the fourth discard, not the third discard. And then we have Monster Reborn and the Abyss Scale, so what we could do is I don't want to link the Mulan away, is if we really want to spell negate, what we could do is just Monster Reborn, bring back the Megalo, attach the scale, uh, pass turn, and then we'll link in their standby phase, or main phase, whatever, because Halka Fiber Axe in the main phase. If they pass priority, if they play a card, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna go straight into Desert Locust and use Locust Effect to discard a fifth card. Uh, and then your opponent is staring down <laughs> with one card a single spell negate, which isn't the most powerful, but they happen to only have one spell, and then you basically loot their whole hand, and a bunch of big monsters. And if they have only one card in hand, 
be pretty hard for them to get over that. If they're playing a deck that isn't super graveyard based, like Shadal's or whatever, that can advantage off the discards, they are probably just going to lose. So, yeah, this is definitely something I go up against against some more like niche matchups. Against Shadal's, don't really want to go for it. Against Salamangrid, it's it's pretty good to go against that because they don't have too many graveyard things that are you have to worry about. Uh, let's do another testing here. That was like one of the best possible things we could open, and there are so many different routes we could have taken with that hand. I just decided to go the hand loop out just because I feel like it's something that isn't really shown as much on YouTube. All right, test hand, numero dos. Let's see what we get here. Do a little bit more shuffling and a final cut. And what do we have here? So we have Diva again, Gund, Scale, uh, Nethabyss, and a Called by the Grave. So uh, here I feel pretty safe just normal summoning my Diva, which is now at three, thankfully, because I have a Called by the Grave. If we get Imperm, we just cry. Uh, not really much else to say about that. We don't, we played around every hand trap, or excuse me, we haven't answered every hand trap except for Imperm. I'll take it. The summon Diva. Uh, Diva's effect's gonna activate. We're going to send, or sorry, um, Death is gonna activate. Send Dragoons, add Dragoons, add Megalo. We do have a form of an extended in our hand too in that Nectivist, which is kind of nice. Where's my Megalo? I'm playing two of you. There you are. And now we have a lot of cards in here. Unfortunately, we drew the Abyss Gale, which is kind of annoying. But we do have Gun, so maybe we can play around with that. Um, here... I'm just trying to think if I want to link away to Halka Firebrax now, or if I want to summon the Megalo first and keep the Nephthibus on board for later and get a potential Trishula Synchro. So I think I'm going to do that, actually. I'll discard these two, summon Megalo, bring back the Atlantean Dragoons, get a search off the Dragoons, and I'm trying to think, will I be able to go into Mulan here? Let's think about this. Or should I just get Lapis Dragon? Lapis Dragon's the easier play. So if I go link to Halka Firebrax, bring up the thing, um, I should be able to, actually. I have to play around it a little bit awkwardly. Uh, but here... We're going to link to summon Chris John Halka Fibrax. Use the effect. Summoning out our Jet Synchron. And now here we have a little bit of a tricky situation. So I left the Nephthibus for a Synchro. But the thing is we really won't be able to get into a Synchro. So I'm going to link the one Nephthibus. This is one of the reasons why I play uh, Link Spider. Not Link Spider. Uh, link Rio, by the way, is because of situations like this where it comes up getting an extra monster, so to say. Uh, bring out Link Rebo, that brings us with five waters. Drop the Mulan, and then here, we could go for a straight up Appaloosa here, if we so desired. Um, however, I'm trying to think. I could also go, hmm. Now I'm gonna go for a straight up Appaloosa. Deep Sea Diva, Jet Synchron, and Helga Firebrax. We'll leave the Link Rebo, so I guess we have a form of battle protection, so to say, which isn't terrible. Uh, this is my proxy. For Appaloosa, they don't have one. We're using the Deco Talker. We have a Deco with three negates, a discard two, a Battle Stalker, I guess, so we can save our Appaloosa potentially, uh, and a set called by the Grave. So, not the strongest hand, but uh, that was pretty much just Diva plus Extender. Uh, and again, you know, there's a lot of other routes you could have won with that because, you know, how the Fireback just opens up a lot more opportunities. Let's see if we can get a hand without Diva here because it, I'm sure you guys are well aware, if you know Mermail, that Diva is a very good card. Uh, D.Va on its own, just D.Va and no other cards in your hand, you could actually go pretty far. Uh, so I want to see, let's get like a Swat Frog or a Teus or Aqua Spirit hand. Let, let's see what we get here. So we got Dragoons, Teus, okay. Another Teus, one for one, and a Reborn. Wow. Uh, very good hand. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it safe this hand. Uh, let's imagine the situation is I'm playing at Salamangrate. I lost game one and I'm going second, or I'm going first. And game two, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> Not like it really matters too much, but that's just the scenario, so you guys maybe understand why I'm playing the way that I'm playing. So, Scourge Dragoon, Special Summon Teus. We're gonna do the infamous combo that I love with the Bisp Bike to play under Nibiru. Now, I'm not exactly sure where this combo originated. There was some controversy in the video that I mentioned it uh, when I first saw it on the Bishire's channel, but apparently other people have come up with it too. And that's the case with the Mermail too. Like, uh, let me have to think here, what am I getting? Hold on. We get Pike and we get uh, Nathibus. Is a lot of times with the Mermail combos, uh, you know, multiple people come up with the same combo because, you know, we all play the same Mermail deck and we're all doing the same thing. So it's not too outlandish to expect people to have very similar combos that are the same. For example, the hand loop combo that I showed before, I figured that out on my own, but that's a really simple combo to figure out that I'm sure hundreds of Mermail players have figured out as well. It's not like uh, other combos that are much more intricate that are a bit harder to see. So anyway, normal summon the Abyss Spike, not the Nephthibus. Use the effect of Abyss Spike, 
discard the Prince, bring back the Dragoons, that'll be our third summon. And we're gonna use the effect of Pike, which will nab us a copy of Mermelibus Gun. You could get Mander, play Mander, uh, whatever. Get the gun though. And here we're going to overlay, thanks to Master Roll 5, for our fourth summon. Go into our Bahamut Shark. And on our fifth summon, detaching Dragoons, getting a search off Dragoons. Will be the totally awesome, and that is how you dodge Nibiru, basically. Um, this is your fifth summon. If the Nibiru you're here, no problem, just tribute the totally awesome and take their Nibiru and set it. And then next one you have a 3000 meter to kill your opponent with. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, Dragoon's effects and activate. Uh, we could get our... What do you think here, actually? I'm gonna get... Yeah, I'm gonna get Moolin here. I think Moolin's probably the best thing to get. We could get Lapis Dragon if we wanted to. Uh, but if we get a Moolin, we get a discard, which is kind of nice. So we're gonna link these two. There'll be five waters in Grave now. I'll go to Coral and Enemy, one of my favorite cards in the extra deck, to be honest. Even though it does limit you to only waters, I feel like it just allows you to play so much better. If that makes sense. So yeah, we have five waters because we have Netabis, Dragoons, Pike, Shark, and Teus. We can drop our Moolin Glacia, not under the extra monster zone, because I, I do not want it to get uh, eaten by Relinquished. And then we're going to use the effect of Coral and Enemy to summon a monster to link monster she points to. Or rather, a 50 hunter or less water. Forget the Neptibus. Use the effect of Neptibus. Send Dragoons, add Dragoons, add Megalo. And that's that's Mermel in a nutshell right there. Send Dragoons, add Dragoons. Because Dragoons is not once per turn. And I sincerely hope they don't errata it. I doubt they will. I know they're eradicating Red and V. But um, if they ever errata Dragoons to be once per turn, I will be so sad. Granted, the deck will like, function completely differently if they did that. Anyway, uh, we're going to summon Megalo. Discarding two, the Dragoons and the uh, Gun, summon Megalo. Going to bring back the Teus as Chainlink 3. Uh, sorry, Chainlink 3 will be the search. Chain then the rest doesn't matter because, you know, it doesn't really matter. Because if they have a response, they have to respond last anyway. But you always know Megalo is going to be last in Chainlink 99% of the time because you don't want to get hand trapped or anything like that. Rather, you don't want your gun to get hand trapped or anything like that. Uh, and then I'm going to get a uh, heavy imagery here because we actually get a pop if we make Coral an enemy here, which I think I'm going to do. I should have done it this way, by the way. doesn't really matter too much, but should have done it this way. I'm going to link these two. Go into Coral and enemy. Or sorry, uh, Mermel Abyss Alacia. Not Coral and enemy. It's already on the board. I'm going to attach the scale to it. And since I have the Monster Reborn, I'll play it. And I will bring back my Teus. Transversely, I could win for one for one. Go for a level eight Synchro. Could have done that. If you play level eight synchros, something to keep in mind. Uh, and then overlay these two. And go into Abyskyos for a monster negate. So basically what we did here was we had uh, two discards. We have an answer to two of their cards. We have the spell negate and the abyss scale. We have the infantry pop, so that's four answers. We have the totally awesome, that's five. Uh, right? One, two, three, four. Wait, hold on. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five. We have six answers to their six cards. Are they not necessarily six interruptions because these cards aren't exactly interruptions? Uh, but you know what I'm saying. So that was actually pretty good. Uh, and having Monster Reborn made that hand actually a lot better than I thought it would be because it pretty much made another negate. And it also somewhat protected us from battle because Abyss Chaos has another effect where level seven or higher monsters cannot attack. With. I keep getting hands that are Diva, Neptibus, Teus hands basically. Uh, I did like three or four in a row, and there's really no point of showcasing, you know, the, the same hand, basically. So I kind of, I think I'm going to skew a hand if I don't get a good hand here. And I want to show you guys things you can do with like Swat Frog and Genex Undyne and stuff like that. Uh, so speaking of Swat Frog, we drew it. Deep Sea Diva. Okay, um, let's pretend instead of drawing Diva, we drew Genex Undyne there. Because I want to show Genex Undyne combos at least a little bit. Because Undyne is a really good card. There we go. There's Undyne. So we're going to use Genex Undyne, normal summon it, activate her effect, or his effect, I don't know. I always thought Genex Undyne was a girl, not like it really matters. <laughs> Send Rosenix, add a controller, use the effect of Rosenix to get a token, which will then immediately be linked into Link Spider, and use the effect of our Link Spider to special summon the controller to our hand, making it more of a combo piece now, which is kind of funny, because either this technically a break, but it could also be a combo piece. If you have the Rosenix, link to, of course, you have Tuner and a non-Tuner, and how Firebrax, how Firebrax effects and activate. I'm going to bring out our handy, dandy, get Synchron. And now here, what we could do is we could actually just go into. Let me think here, actually. Um, 
Link 1. That's Link 1. It's a Link Rebo. Another reason why I play Link Rebo, it allows us to make some really weird plays. This could be their Linkish Link as well, I think, because I, th I think it's the same material, just one level 1 monster. But I don't have one, so I'm playing Link Rebo. Uh, use the effect of the Jet Synchron to discard one and bring it back. Then I'll get banished, of course. I'm gonna Synchro 4 into Herald of the Arclights. And I'll just put it over here so it's out of the way. And then we have the frog, so we can discard water, special frog. Uh, use the effect of the frog, send ourselves a copy of Ronin and Tone into the graveyard. And then a link Link Rebo, Halka Fibrax, and the Swap Frog into our Appaloosa proxy, of course. Uh, for four interruptions and a macro cosmos light card. So nothing really, and we can set the call by the game, I guess. Uh, provided we didn't activate it that turn. So that was a fun little combo. Uh, definitely part of the reason why I really like playing Genic Sundown is because it allows us to play this card as well. And I just feel like, you know, granted you do have the brick in the Judge Controller, but it just allows for so many cool plays and it's just another starter card to play. Like sure, we technically have nine normal summons in the deck between the three D.Va, three Neptibus, and now the three Genic Sundine, but you really need to see one of them, otherwise you have like no plays. All right, let's get another hand going here. See what we get. Dragoons, Call by the Grave, Undyne, Swap, and a Heavy Infantry. So this hand is actually pretty similar to the last hand, although we have that Dragoons in hand, which we could play around with. So I'm gonna use the Genic Sundine. Actually, I'm gonna show you something a little bit different. It's not the most optimal play that you can make, but I wanna show you that it is a play you can make uh, depending on your hand, if you're going first, going second, and uh, what you could do. So, we're going to use Genic Sundine, and we're actually going to send the Prince. Uh, again, this is not the most optimal play you can make, but um, if you have, like, a similar hand, uh, it is... There are situations where this comes out, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and this is, like, the best play you can make, in some situations. The controller, I'm going to use Swap Frog's effect, discard infantry, push on the Swap Frog, use the effect of Swap Frog, send ourselves a Ronin Tonin. Because if I went the more optimal route with this combo, it would have just been like the same as the previous test hand. So let's have some fun and do something a bit different. So here, what we can do is we can link to summon Coral and Enemy. Use the effect of Coral and Enemy to bring back Neptibus. Use the effect of Neptibus. You send Dragoons, add Dragoons, add Megalo. Send Dragoons, add Dragoons, add Megalo. I'm going to discard the two Dragoons to special summon the Megalo. We're going to use Megalo's chain link 3, and then the Dragoons is 2 and 1. Get the Abyss Gel off Megalo. And then here we're going to get Lapis Dragon. And I guess we will get the Heavy Infantry because we can't summon Mullen here. We'll do that. Lapis Dragon will summon itself. Uh, we're locked into only water, so we do have to keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to link these two, I guess. Now, I'm just trying to think out a play there, but uh, I keep forgetting that Ronin Tony cannot use a synchro material. So, yeah, there was a few things that we could have possibly done, but uh, there were just a few restrictions that limit us. So we're going to link to anyway. We're going to summon out the Abyss Alacia. Going to attach the Abyss Scale to the Abyss Alacia. And uh, that wasn't really the strongest thing we could have done, but uh, it just goes to show you that that was pretty much just off of Jetix Undyne plus Extender uh, <laughs> to go into this, which is... You know, let's say you have a hand that just literally Genix Undyne, Swap Frog, and then like one random useless water plus two useless spells. Uh, there are hands that come up like that, and that is something you could do, and it's better than nothing. And that's all thanks to Coral Enemy, which in my opinion is probably the second best link in the extra deck behind uh, Needle Fiber, because Needle Fiber is just insane. All right, I think we'll do two more hands here. I was just in the middle of a hand, and I, I messed it up somehow. I think I forgot to search off of something because. My hand just didn't make sense for what was on the field, and I was like, you know what, I'm pretty sure I messed something up. So I'll just reshuffle, get another hand, see what we get going here, and uh, show you guys what this deck can do. So we got Abyss Scale, not too great. Controller, not too great. Maria Gree, not too great. Dragoons, okay. And Aqua Spirit. So here, we play that Maria Gree, for sure. Shuffling back the Aqua Spirit and the Dragoons because there are only waters. Unfortunately, you can't put back Genix Controller because it is a dark monster. If it was a water, this would be uh, a lot better, actually. Maria Gree would be a way better card if you could shuffle this back. I feel like a lot of people would play Genix Controller if it was a water. Unfortunately, it's not, though. It's a dark. I'm going to draw three. Neptibus, Swap Frog, and Diva. Wow. Look at that. So since our hand is uh, pretty... You know what, actually? Let's do something funny. Let's do something different. So 
let's say we decide to be greedy and we go, okay, I'm gonna normal summon Diva and then just drop that fat Ash Blossom on us. And we go, well, that's unfortunate. What can we do? What can we do if we just get Ashed right here? And let's just think about this. That's not a play I wouldn't necessarily made, I would've summoned Neptibus, but hypothetically speaking, let's just see what we can do. So we're gonna discard the Prince, special the Swap Frog, Swap Frog's effects can activate, and we'll send our Ronin Tonin, which will give us another Extender-like monster. Of course, we can bring it back later in our combo, most likely. So we have a Tuner and a Non-Tuner, we're gonna Synchro. We're not really Synchro, but put Howl the Fireback, which is kinda like a Synchro, because it needs a Tuner. We're gonna use the effect of Howl the Fireback, I'm going to summon out our Jet Synchron from the deck. If I can find it. Where are you? Of course, it's at the top. We are going to... I guess we could just link one, right? We could just link one. Summon out Link Karibo. Uh, bring it back by discarding the Genix controller. And then use the effect as Ronin, I guess, to bring it back. And then go into a Link 4, leaving the Link Karibo. And getting out Appaloosa. So again, not a really super strong and not a super strong combo, but uh, that just shows you like if you have Diva plus Extender uh, and you get the Diva hand trapped, you could at least do something. You know, considering the fact we got hand trapped, this isn't that bad. Uh, if we were to get hand trapped more than once in that combo, though, it'd probably be pretty bad. Uh, but the thing is, the only like two hand traps that could stop us would have been Impermanent Ash. All right, let's do one last test hand. See what we get. Fortunately, I haven't had a situation where I just drew a straight up brick yet, uh, which is another thing I really like about this version of the deck, is I feel like it doesn't just straight brick at all. Or, I mean, of course it does brick, but it does definitely brick less than other variants I've played in the past, probably because I play such a high water count, and because I have, you know, nine starter cards, so to say, which are all pretty easy to get to. That's not one of them, though. Jet Synchron, uh, Abysteus, Ronin Tonin, Deep Sea Diva, and Atlantean Dragoons. Um... Let's just shuffle this. <laughs> Let's just put these to the bottom and draw five more. I got another hand of Taste Dragoons. And I'm like, you know, I don't want to show another Taste Dragoons hand. I feel like I've shown just about everything I want to show, though. I've shown plays with Swap Frog. I've shown plays with Genic Controller. I've shown plays with Diva. I've shown plays with Coral and Enemy. Did a lot of Halka Firebacks plays. I'm pretty sure I summoned, like, everything from the extra deck, if I'm not mistaken. Did I summon everything in my extra deck? I... I think I did. Yeah, I didn't summon Borload and Dwell Eye, but those are more situational cards anyway. So, let's go to another hand. Ronin Tonin, Neptibis, Deep Sea Diva, Swap Frog, and Genix Nine. So in this particular hand, we drew three of our starter cards, which I guess is one of the downsides of playing nine normal summons, so to say. But uh, you do definitely need to see one. And Neptibis, I guess, is an extender, because you can discard it. Uh, but for this particular hand, actually, I just realized we had double frogs. So hold on. Discard frog, special frog, you already know. I didn't even realize I had that. I was almost going to normal summon Neptibus. But since we have this, like, why not? Thank you, Master Rule 5, for allowing me to put up negates early in my summonings. That makes sense. Thank you for allowing me to put up a negate in such a few amount of summons, Master Rule 5. Because now we can just summon Diva. Wow, look at that. Summon Diva uh, in the center zone, because it's definitely net linked away. I'm going to bring out Neptibus, use the effect of Neptibus, send Dragoons, add Dragoons, classic. Classic Mermail combo, send Dragoons, add Dragoons, add Megalo. Uh, let's see here now. So I want to link to and summon my favorite card, Hell of a Firebrax. Wow, look at that. I love this card. Bex can activate. I'm going to summon out my Jet Synchron. Uh, if you play Fishborg, you could summon that too. That might actually be better in this particular combo. Not really sure yet. And now here we have an option. So I could discard Undyne and Dragoons for Megalo to ensure that I get Mulan, or I could discard the Nectavis and get an Extender-like card out uh, by bringing back the Dragoons, which I think I'm going to do that actually. So we're going to discard the Dragoons and the Nectavis for Megalo. We're going to bring back the Dragoons, and we're going to get Mulan. Actually, we're going to get the Abyssal for sure. Because we summoned Megalo. That's the last in the chain link. And then I think I'm going to get Moolin here. Yeah, we're going to do something a little bit weird here. And we're going to put up like half negates, half hand loop. So uh, what we're going to do here actually is we're going to Synchro Summon. Jet Synchron and Abyss Megalo. For a level 8 Synchro. We already know. You already know. Cypher Moon Omega. If you play the Adamantia, you can summon that instead. That's really good as well. Use the effect. Rip a card out of their hand. Very good. 
We have five waters now. Summon Megalo, or summon whatever this card's called, Moon Lithia. Rip three. And then now we can discard the Abyss Scale, bring back the Jet Synchron, because I hit my bike there by accident, and go for a link four with the Dragoons, Jet Synchron, and Halka Fibrax. Uh, Jet Synchron is actually banished, but we could bring it back. <laughs> we could bring it back if we want to off Cypher Moto Omega, which is amazing, and go into our handy dandy Appaloosa Proxy by Deco Talker. So that's three discards plus four negates. Uh, and we have a live normal summon next turn, provided we don't draw the Genex controller. Uh, so we don't. So that was actually a pretty fun combo. So yeah, this deck is, I feel like, a lot better than it's been in a while. I feel like this is probably the best incarnation of the deck has been ever since, like, Firewall Gumblar looped, basically, which was a really fun time to play Mermel, if you ask me. And that'll be it for today. Leave a comment let me know what you think, if I missed any combos, if I could have done anything different, if I played any different cards. A lot of times on these testing videos, I get comments like, hey, you could have done this, 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 and this. Uh, but a lot of times, I couldn't have done those, this, this, that, and that, because I didn't play specific cards involved for that combo. Either way, I'm rambling. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy. I'm losing my voice. I will see you all next time, and bye-bye.